Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. We're going to talk about the Rebuild Curve option. The, it's under the Surfaces module, Animation, Polygons, Surfaces, and then under the Edit Curves, it's a curve operation, so Edit Curves, Rebuild Curve. And in this little box here, we have all these different options. So just real quick, let's just take a look at these. Uh, rebuild Type is the very first setting and you have lots lots of options here for what type of rebuild we're going to do and whenever you click through these you'll notice that all the other settings kind of change based on what type of rebuild we're going to use so there's lots of different options in here and we're going to try and go over all of them as thoroughly as possible hopefully it won't take a long time uh, so first one is uniform that's probably the most common one to use and it has all these options here but first of all, we need to build a curve or make a curve. Let me minimize this. I'm going to hold down the space bar to go open up the hot box here. I'm going to left click on the Maya label in the middle. And I'll change to the front view. And I'll hide the grid. I go to Create, CV Curve Tool. And you can use the EP Curve Tool or the Bezier Curve Tool or the Pencil Curve Tool. It doesn't really matter. And all these tools will have videos going over at some point, if I don't already, uh, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, but CV Curve Tool, I'm just going to click and drag, I'm sorry, click and click and make a curve. There's no dragging involved. You can drag a point around as you are making the curve, just so you can kind of put it where you want and then let go, click and click, so on. So I'm something uh, kind of spirally, hopefully we'll get a good visual when we rebuild this we can see what happens to it very easily but yeah if I right click on the curve I have a couple of uh, component selections I can make uh, if you're not really familiar with uh, components of a NURB uh, surface I have a NURBS uh, components video already up uh, this is a curve it's not a surface so there is this extra component called curve point uh, which all that really does is if when you select curve point you can actually click on the curve and just kind of highlight a point on the curve that you can then tell Maya to do something to that, whatever it's going to be here. Under Edit Curves menu, you have lots of different things you can do to a curve. And for Maya to know where on the curve you want to do that thing, you have to be able to highlight a point along the curve, and that's what Curve Point does. Right click, uh, Control Vertex is what I wanted to show you. I'm going to change my background color to black just because I think it's a little bit easier to see all the points uh, with a black background and you just hit alt B to kind of cycle through the different background colors that Maya has available by default but all these points are where I clicked that's where they're placed if you ever want to uh, if you're ever wondering why these points are the way they are that's because that's where I clicked the mouse in the front view camera and that's where they're placed so we're going to keep these these points in mind as we go forward and I'm sure we'll see differences as we rebuild the curve and change how it's constructed. So let's go back to our rebuild curve options and see what happens. At the very bottom of the options, keep original. We're going to probably use that a lot. But edit reset settings and check keep original. So this way whenever we do a rebuild it will rebuild the curve but it will copy the curve first and rebuild the copy so then your original curve is still there and your new curve appears and so then we can see what's happening as a, a difference between the two so uniform so uniform is essentially uniform parameterization so it's like whatever your whatever settings you're choosing is going to be uniform uniformly applied to the entire curve so parameter range you have zero to one keep and zero to number of spans. So let me uh, minimize those options and hit Control A to open the attribute editor while my ha I have my curve selected. So over here in the NURBS curve history, we have a min max value, spans, and degree. So degree is, if I go back to my CV curve tool under the options here, you see my curve degree, what I used was three or cubic. So all that's saying, that's just telling you, I don't want another curve, that's just telling you 
the degree of the curve we made is 3 or cubic we already knew that and there's 17 spans in the curve which is how many spaces in between CVs I have or sorry it's actually spaces in between um, edit points that I have between each one of these edit points is a span let me change the background again there we go so a little bit hard to see is a little purple X or pink X on the, the line and between each one of those is a span which is a NURBS term for a surface between points or or in this case a line between points so let's go back to object mode so 17 spans min max value 0 to 17 okay attributes here I'm sorry options here so parameter range is be changing the min max values so if parameter range is 0 to 1 keep or 0 to number of spans so from 0 to 1 and I'm going to keep the number of spans the same because number of spans here you can change it and by default it goes to 4 so I'm going to change it actually to match the spans we already have just so it's a little bit easier to explain as a, so because if I change it to have four spans, the shape of this thing is going to drastically change. I don't want it to drastically change so much. I just want to see the difference that happens when you change these parameter ranges as opposed to changing the spans right now. Let's see, where's a good place to put this? There we go. All right. And let's hit apply. Let's go back to our normal background color. So, the curve I have highlighted is the rebuilt curve. And they're right on, it's right on top of the old curve. I'm going to zoom in here. And hopefully you can see the dark line. That is the old curve, the one I actually drew. And the highlighted curve is the new one that's been created. So you can see it's very subtle. And the main difference... Lower this down. The min-max value of the new curve is 0. To 1 while the old value is 0 to 17 or the old min max value of the old of the first curve so the rebuilt curve has a min max value of 0 to 1 based on the perimeter range 0 to 1 that we indicated in the rebuild options as opposed to the original which is 0 to 17 so why is that important it's a little bit hard to explain quickly without using other tools. Um, so I'm going to open the outliner, the window outliner. Oh, let's hit this button. There we go. So now it's a part of our UI here. X, Y, Z. Those are 3D coordinates in 3D space. The X, Y, Z coordinates for a 3D object. A curve is a 2D object. It doesn't have any depth to it. And so what curves use are... Uh, for 2D space is UV for uh, and U is the surface direction or the uh, this line here is, is in the U direction on the curved surface if you want to call it that and then V the V value is a point along the surface so these points along the surface have uh, numerical values in math to create the curve and also to do things to them and so on so with a min-max value of 0 to 1 of my rebuilt curve, these values start at 0 at the beginning of the curve, and the values will increment up to 1 at the end of the curve. So every value in between the start and end of the curves go between 0 to 1. So 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so on until you get to 1. So let me tell you why that's even that even matters. <laughs> I'm going to hide control H the original curve so this is my rebuilt curve with the 0 to 1 value as uh, min max value 0 to 1 and I'm going to right click and choose curve point and I'm just gonna eyeball somewhere on the curve to detach let's say I want to detach this curve uh, exactly halfway along its length so at the perimeter value of 0.5 because my values go from 0 to 1, 0.5 would indicate the exact middle of this curve along the length. 
So we'll go to Edit Curves, Detach Curve, and make sure that Keep Originals turned on in the options, because otherwise it doesn't have any history if you do this. So Detach. So now I have in my outline, you see, there's my original curve, Curve 1, Curve 1 Rebuilt Curve, and then I have Rebuilt Curve Detached, Curve 1, Rebuilt Curve Detached, Curve 2. I need to rename these things. I guess I could do that. But I'm going to hide now my rebuilt curve. So now I just I have I have the two curves that have been detached. You see that? And over here on the inputs I have detached curve. If I click that, the only value is parameter and the value is 0 0.35458. So I can actually click this parameter value here and middle mouse click and drag and change where along the curve it the, the detach is happening based on the value of the V input or um, 0 to, the, to 1 based on that value 0 to 1 to indicate where on this curve it is detached so if I could I can type in here just 0 0.5 enter and it will go to the halfway point on the curve which this is based on the curve's length so if I were to take this curve and, and unwrap it to be completely straight this would be the middle so that's what that's where this comes into play. You can, for indicating the value of where you are along the curve, you can say 0 to 1, which gives us this ability to put in like 0.5, so we know exactly where the middle is. Or, getting back to the original point, let me delete all this stuff, and unhide my rebuilt curve, and bring back my options. So perimeter range, 0 to 1. If I were to choose, actually I'll delete my rebuilt curve and unhide my original curve. Okay. So we'll delete. So curve 1 to my original. I'm going to retype. I'm going to rename this original curve. Like that. So now if I were to rebuild and choose keep, it will keep the perimeter range of the original curve. So if I, so that's 0 to 17. But the reason why that's important is if you say 0 to number of spans and I choose a different number of spans, let's say 10, then the rebuild will be 1 or 0 to 10. If I were to say keep, even though I have 10 spans, the value will still be 0 to 17. So you can control that in that way. So the reason why that would be handy, so just like with 0 to 1, 0 0.5, a value of 0.5 would indicate the middle of the curve. If you had 0 number spans and you had 17 spans, you could say, well, go to 10, and you would know you're on the 10th span of the curve, if that was important for what you're trying to do. Hopefully that makes sense with the perimeter range. It's a little hard to explain. It's, it's a numerical uh, value that is used in other tools. Let's go to keep. So keep we have check boxes. So we can keep one or more of all these these four things. The ends, the tangents, the CVs, and the number of spans. And again, we're still under the uniform rebuild type. So we got a lot to cover. I need to go quicker. Uh, so number of spans here is this slider I can change. And you're just changing the spans of, from the original, which is 17 in this case, since that's how many dots are clicks I made when I was building the curve and you can change this number to something else and why is number of spans important if I were to say make it five you apply you can see quite a drastic change undo that I say 41 apply it's not as much of a change but it's, it's subtle it's a little bit more more smooth of a curve than my original curve if I right-click and choose Control Vertex, you'll see I have a lot more points along this curve because each point, or each span between points, I should say, indicates one of these spans that we rebuilt it. So number of spans, just to skip over Keep real quick, the number of spans slider here is, is pretty much self-explanatory of what it does. It indicates how many spans you want. And then Degree, let's go ahead and go over that real quick too. 
Degree is the curve, curve degree. Uh, we've talked about degree for surfaces before, which have had linear or cubic. Curve degrees have more than just those two. They have linear, then two, which has no other name, and three, cubic, and five, and seven. So if I choose a linear degree and hit apply, you can see I get a much drastic effect. So in between each span is literally a straight line between each span with a linear degree. There's no curvature at all in the curve. Hit undo. I did the seven, the more, the more drastic option, hit apply, is just a little bit more smoother. So the one thing to know about degree is the higher the degree, the smoother your curve. All right, so keep that in mind. So if you want to adjust the smoothness, if it's not smooth enough, you can increase the degree, hit apply, to seven, for example. Or if you want to make it a little bit chunkier, you can say go to two, hit apply. There you go, a little bit not quite as smooth as the original. So that's the degree. I just wanted to get, get that out of, out of the way real quick before I move on to keep options here. Ends, tangents, CVs, and number of spans. And that's it's a little bit self explanatory. If you want to keep the endpoints where they are, check that box. If you want to keep the tangents, you check this box. And in tangents is, is the direction of the curve's cur curvature based on uh, the original. And again, that's math. I'm not good at math. But then you also can keep the CVs or like keep them where they are, don't change their positions and the number of spans. So if I check keep number of spans you'll see that my number of spans slider becomes grayed out because I'm indicating I want to keep the number of spans I already have and therefore changing it doesn't make any sense anymore so it grays that out. You can keep CVs you don't need to keep anything else because you're going to keep all the points where they are which would of course also keep the number of spans the tangents and the ends. CVs kinda of does all three check tangents it just kinda of keeps that curve direction similar but the rest of it can rebuild based on the other options and then the endpoints so you can have both of these selected at the same time so if let's say let's do a degree of three let's just keep it simple and with ends and tangents checked, hit apply. So we get this result. And with ends and tangents unchecked, hit apply. We get that result. So it's a little bit different. The endpoints still kind of stay the same based on uh, how Maya decides to do this. But you can see the curvature of the rest of the curve definitely changes. Let me undo those, get back to my original. Keep number of spans. If you want to rebuild the curve with like a different degree, but keep the same number of spans, you can hit apply, and that's how you can do that. Same with the CVs actually. If you want to keep the same CVs but actually change the degree of the curve, you can hit apply and it will do that. So this is using this this linear curve here is using the same number of spans, same endpoints, same everything, except it's linear now and it's using the same CV positions. If I right click and choose control vertex uh, black screen there we go. and then switch between my two curves you can see the CVs are in the same place there we go so I'm actually displaying the CVs of my original curve but it almost looks like a hole on a NURBS surface if you're familiar with NURBS components where this second curve is literally linear going between the points I've already made because it's a linear curve using the same CV positions as the original curve.